welcome to another lesson for English language. This is a lesson for Form 1 and then we are using the textbook Pass 2. The tip is on health and environment. Today we are going to learn Unit 3. The topic is Wild Weather. Before we start, let's look at the learning standards. We have two main skills and also complementary skills. Let's look at speaking. For the main skill, speaking 2.1.1 asks about and give detailed information about themselves and others. And we have reading 3.1.2 understand specific details and information in simple longer text. And then we have listening 1.1.2 understand with little or no support specific information and details in simple longer text on a range of familiar topics from the for the complementary skills we are speaking 2.3.2 agree on a set of basic steps needed to complete extended classroom tasks and reading 3.1.1 understand the main points in simple longer text speaking 2.4.1 the rate short stories events and experiences and the last one listening 1.1.1 understand with little or no support the main ideas in simple longer text on a range of familiar topics unit 3 vocabulary and speaking weather exercise 1 sunny rainy Windy, snowy, stormy, cloudy, damp, icy, foggy, warm, wet. Dry. Thunder and lightning. Blizzard. Heat wave. Hailstones. Dear pupils, look at the pictures. What's the weather like in London, Tokyo, Sydney, Athens? Madrid, New York. Let's look at example is London. So you can say in London it's cool and foggy. So now let's look at the answers for Athens. We can look at the image there or the uh, icon. So you have a cloud. You have two clouds there. One is grey and one is blue. So you can say, in Athens, it's warm and cloudy. Now for Madrid, you see a cloud again and you can see uh, the image of a, a cloud and also rain, right? So you can say, in Madrid, it's wet and rainy. And then in New York, you can say, in New York, it's cold and snowy. Because you see the image of the grey cloud and also snow. The next one, in Sydney, it's hot and sunny. Because you can see the image of the sun and the cloud. And then the last one, in Tokyo, it's stormy. Now let's answer some questions. Uh, exercise 3, in which city is there a heat wave? So heat wave is a period of time such as a few weeks when the weather is much hotter than usual. So the answer is Sydney. Number two, in which city could you hear thunder and see lightning? So the answer is Tokyo. And the last one, in which city could you get caught in a blizzard? So the answer is New York. So what is a blizzard? It is a severe snowstorm with strong winds. Now let's look at 
spring, summer, autumn and winter. So let's look at the box in red. The season of the year between spring and autumn when the weather is warmest, lasting from June to September, north of the equator and from December to March, south of the equator. So what is the season? So the answer is, it is summer. Next one, the box in green. The season of the year between winter and summer lasting from March to June, north of the equator and from September to December, south of the equator. When the weather becomes warmer, leaves and plants start to grow again and flowers appear. So the answer is spring. Next, the box in brown. The, sum, the season of the year between summer and winter lasting from September to November, north of the equator and from March to May, south of the equator, when fruits and crops become ready to eat and are picked and leaves fall. So the answer is autumn. Another word for autumn is fall. And the last one is the box in grey. The season between autumn and spring lasting from November to March, north of the equator, and from May to September, south of the equator, when the time is the coldest. So the answer is winter. Now you can read about the weather in Sydney, Australia. Then change the red words to make the sentences true for your country. Example, in spring, it's usually sunny and dry. In summer, it's very hot and windy. In autumn, it's sometimes rainy and foggy. In winter, it's warm but often stormy. In what kind of weather do you do these activities? Ask and answer in pairs. So you can work with your partner in class to answer this. What weather? Is it suitable for these activities? For example, go windsurfing, go skiing, play volleyball, play computer games. When do you go windsurfing? So you can say, I go windsurfing on windy days. Dear pupils, now we are going to move on to the reading lesson. So later on, you are going to listen to a news report. Look at the pictures. What do you think happened to the girl? Read, listen and check. Unit 3. Reading. A news report. Exercise 1. Saved by an MP3 player. Sophie Frost, a schoolgirl from England, felt very lucky when her grandmother gave her an MP3 player as a present. She didn't know just how lucky she was, however. When an unexpected accident happened a few days later, the MP3 player probably saved her life. Fourteen-year-old Sophie was going for a walk with her boyfriend, Mason Billington, when it started raining. The young couple took shelter from the rain under a tree and were sitting together when lightning struck. The lightning hit them both and they lost consciousness. Then Mason woke up and carried Sophie to the nearest road in order to get help. A car stopped and took them to hospital. Sophie had some burns on her chest and legs. She also had some damage to her eyes and ears, but fortunately she quickly recovered. How did Sophie's MP3 player prevent her from having serious injuries? When the accident happened, she wasn't listening to music on the player, but was wearing it around her neck. Doctors believe that the lightning travelled through the wire of the MP3 player instead of through Sophie's body. Even though she was lucky this time, one thing's for sure. 
the next time there's a storm, she and her boyfriend won't sit underneath a tree. Did you know? Lightning can travel at 150,000 kilometres per second. So after reading and listening to the news report, what do you think happened to the girl? So the answer, her MP3 player probably saved her life when she was struck by lightning. Her MP3 player probably saved her life when lightning hit her. Now, read the report again and put the events in order. So you have A, B, C, D and E. A, it started raining. Sophie went to hospital. Sophie and his friend went for a walk. Sophie's grandmother gave her a present. And the last one, an accident happened. So you have to put the events in order. So the first event is D. Sophie's grandmother gave her a present. The second one is C. Sophie and her friend went for a walk. And then A. It started raining. Then E. An accident happened. B. Is the last one. Sophie went to hospital. Dear pupils, let's look at the word check. Make sure you can understand these words. Take shelter, consciousness, burn, damage, recover, injury, wire. Did you know lightning can travel at 150,000 km per second? Let's answer the questions in exercise 3. Number 1. What did Sophie's grandmother give her? Answer, an MP3 player. Number 2. Where were Sophie and her friend when lightning struck? Under a tree. Number 3. How did Sophie go to hospital? Answer, by car. Number four, where was Sophie hurt? Sophie's chest, legs, eyes and ears were hurt. Number five, where was Sophie's MP3 player when the accident happened? Answer, around her neck. The last question, question six, what part of the MP3 player did the lightning go through? Answer, the wire. Dear pupils, now we are doing the grammar lesson. Today we are going to learn past continuous. There are four types of sentences. You have all forms. There are affirmative, negative, questions and short answers. So for past continuous, affirmative is the positive sentences or uh, positive form. I, he, she, it was talking with friends. So, was talking will be past continuous. We, you, they were doing their homework. Were doing is the past continuous. And then we have the negative form. I, he, she, it wasn't tidying her room. Wasn't tidying is the negative for past continuous. We, you, they weren't eating lunch. So, weren't eating is the past continuous. In the negative form, then we have questions. Was it snowing? Were we, you, they walking? Then we have the short answers. Yes, it was. No, we weren't. No, you weren't. No, they weren't. We use the past continuous to talk about things that were in progress in the past. So now, let's look at more sentences. I, he, she, it was going for a walk. We, you, they. So answer will be. Were standing under a tree. So can that be the answer? Let's check. Okay. Or you can say were sitting under a tree. Okay, let's look at the negative. I, he, she, it. To music. So 
answer will be wasn't listening to music. Let's look at we. The next sentence, we, you, they weren't standing in the rain. Then look at number three, it. So question, it will be was, right? So was it raining? Then let's look at were. Were we, you, they talking? The short answers, yes, it was, no, we, you, they weren't. Okay, you can copy and complete the table with past continuous forms of rain, sit, listen, or you can write other answers. Now for question 2. Read the table and choose the correct words to complete rules 1 and A and B. A. We use the past continuous to talk about actions in progress or completed actions in the past. So answer will be action in progress. For B, we form the past continuous with was or were plus the verb and ing or infinitive form of the verb. So answer will be ing. Now, for exercise 3, read the spelling rules on page 39 and then write the ing form of the verbs in the box. So we have tell, do, lie, get, come and run. So let's look at past continuous spelling rules. Number one, for most verbs, add ing to the infinitive. So go is going, play will be playing. For verbs that end in e, you have to omit the e and add ing. For example, come. So you take out the e, omit the e, so coming, give. So it becomes giving. For one syllable verbs that end in vowel, vowel will be a e i o u plus consonant except for the blue x and y, double the consonant and add ing. And for verbs that end in i e, omit the i e and add y i n g. For example, die, dying, lie, lying. So, tell will be telling, do will be doing, lie will be lying because you have IE. So, you have to omit IE and put YING. Getting. So, you have to double it because of the E is the vowel and T is the consonant. So, it is for rule number 3. You have to double the consonant. So, T, T, I, and G. Coming, you omit the E, so become coming, M-I-N-G. Running is the same for row number 3 because U is the vowel and N is the consonant. So you have to double the N, so I-N-G. Now, number 4, what were they doing? Write complete questions and answers. He, ski, ice, skate. So the question, was he skiing? The answer, no, he wasn't. He was ice skating. So let's look at the first. You have these words. They swim in the sea, swim in the pool. So answer, were they swimming in the sea? So this is the question. No, they weren't. They were swimming in a pool. Number two, she sleep read. So the question is, was she sleeping? No, she wasn't. She was reading. Number three, they fight play. So question will be, were they fighting? No, they weren't. They were playing. Number four, it lie on the bed, lie on the sofa. So question, was it lying on the bed? No, it wasn't. It was lying on the sofa. Number five, he watched TV, play computer games. So the question, was he watching TV? No, he wasn't. He was playing computer games. 
And number six, she go windsurfing, play volleyball. So the question, was she going windsurfing? No, she wasn't. She was playing volleyball. In English, we usually use the past continuous to talk about temporary situations. When do you use it in your language? Now for exercise 5, complete Tom's email with the past continuous form of the words in bracket. Hi Emma, something really strange happened to me today. I walked home from school and suddenly lots of apples started falling out of the sky. So number one is, I was walking. I couldn't believe it. It rained apples. So answer would be, it was raining apples. Where they come from? So answer, where were they coming from? I went home and told my mom and brother, but they said I not tell the truth. So number four would be, I, was not, I wasn't telling the truth or I was not telling the truth. However, that evening, my mom and dad watched the news on TV and they heard the story. So answer will be, were watching. Nobody knows why the apples fell out of the sky, but they did. I not lie. So I wasn't lying. Or I was not lying. See you soon, Tom. Now let's move on to another grammar lesson. So you are going to learn adverbs. So let's look at what are adverbs. We use adjectives to tell us more about nouns. We use adverbs to tell us more about verbs. For example, it was a bright sunny day. So bright and sunny are adjectives. So the noun is day. Okay, number two, the sun was shining brightly. So shining is the verb. So adverb is brightly. Now look at the study guide on page 39 and then copy and complete the table with the adverbs of the adjectives in the box. So you have noisy, bad, easy, hot, careful, good. So you can put in the correct table. For example, the first one you have regular, so you can say regularly or regularly with the ILY. The first one is LY, the second is ILY, or the third one is irregular. So let us, let's look at adverbs. It's cold, dress warmly. So warmly is the adverb. It's foggy. Drive carefully. So carefully is the adverb. It's raining hard today. So hard is the adverb. I can easily do this exercise. Easily is the adverb. She speaks English well. So well is the adverb. Let's look at the first one. Regularly. So which one are correct? Noisy, bad, easy, hard, careful, good. But you have to add ly. So answer will be badly and carefully. And then ily will be easily. For irregular, irregular means they are you are going you are not putting in or adding ly or ily. So answer will be hard and well. Exercise 7. Choose the correct words to complete the advice. The roads are icy. Drive careful or carefully. Answer will be carefully. Number 2. It was raining hard or hardly yesterday. So answer will be hard. Number 3. There's a storm. Come inside quick or quickly. So answer is quickly. 
the sun was shining very bright or brightly today. Answer would be brightly. It's snowing. Dress warm or warmly. So answer would be warmly. When it's foggy, you want drivers to see you easy or easily. So answer would be easily. Wear bright clothes. Unit 3 Unit 3. Vocabulary and Listening. Natural Disasters. Exercise 2. A hurricane is a storm with very strong winds. An avalanche is a large amount of snow which falls down a mountain. A wildfire happens in hot weather when an area of forest is very dry. A flood happens when it rains a lot. A volcano is a mountain that erupts and releases hot liquid. An earthquake makes the ground move. A tsunami is a very big sea wave. A drought happens when there isn't enough rain. A tornado is a very strong wind that goes round and round. For question 3, what do you know about natural disasters? Look at the quiz. Are the sentences true or false? So natural disasters quiz. 1. Most of the world's volcanoes are in Europe. True or false? Number 2. There are over 1,000 tornadoes in the USA every year. True or false? Number three, an earthquake happens somewhere in the world every 30 seconds. True or false? Number four, landslides can happen because of wildfires. True or false? Unit three, vocabulary and listening. A TV program. Exercise five. Hello, and welcome to Mysteries of the Earth. This week we're talking about natural disasters. Did you know that there are some areas of the world where more natural disasters happen than others? For example, 75% of volcanoes are in the countries on the Pacific Ocean, like Japan and New Zealand. Most of the world's big earthquakes also happen here. And the USA has more tornadoes than any other country, over a thousand a year. Some natural disasters happen more often than you think. For example, there's actually one earthquake every 30 seconds somewhere in the world. That's two a minute. However, most of these earthquakes are so small that we can't feel them. Unfortunately, sometimes one disaster can cause another one. For example, a tsunami sometimes happens after there is an earthquake in the middle of the sea. 
and a wildfire on a mountain can sometimes cause a landslide. We know that trees can stop landslides happening when there aren't any trees. The earth can move more easily and it can come crashing down onto a town or city. The big problem with many natural disasters is that nobody knows when they will happen. Dear pupils, now write three sentences about a disaster that happened in your country. Use words from exercise 1. Example, there was a flood in Cordoba. Some people lost their homes. My family and I were safe. So there are a few examples here. Number 1. There was a flood in Kuala Trengganu. Many people lost their belongings and crops were destroyed too. My family and I were sent to a flood relief center in the town. Number two, there was a landslide in Ipoh. Some people lost their houses and other belongings. Luckily, no life was lost. Number three, there was a storm in my village yesterday. Some houses were damaged and trees were also uprooted. My family and I were lucky because we managed to take shelter in a nearby school building. Now you are going to listen to a TV program about natural disasters and check your answers to exercise 3. Remember exercise 3 uh, was on the quiz. So there are four sentences. Are the sentences true or false? Unit 3. Vocabulary and listening. A TV program. Exercise 5 Hello and welcome to Mysteries of the Earth. This week we're talking about natural disasters. Did you know that there are some areas of the world where more natural disasters happen than others? For example, 75% of volcanoes are in the countries on the Pacific Ocean, like Japan and New Zealand. Most of the world's big earthquakes also happen here. And the USA has more tornadoes than any other country, over a thousand a year. Some natural disasters happen more often than you think. For example, there's actually one earthquake every 30 seconds somewhere in the world. That's two a minute. However, most of these earthquakes are so small that we can't feel them. Unfortunately, sometimes one disaster can cause another one. For example, a tsunami sometimes happens after there is an earthquake in the middle of the sea. And a wildfire on a mountain can sometimes cause a landslide. We know that trees can stop landslides happening when there aren't any trees. The earth can move more easily and it can come crashing down onto a town or city. The big problem with many natural disasters is that nobody knows when they will happen. Listen again and answer the questions. Number one, which two kinds of disaster often happen near the Pacific Ocean? So answer will be volcanoes and earthquakes. Why don't we always feel earthquakes? Answer will be because they are too small. Where do some tsunamis start? Answer, in the middle of the sea. What can stop a landslide? Answer is trees. Number five, what do birds sometimes do before a disaster? They stop singing. Dear pupils, look at the pictures of Jay and his house after the earthquake. Can you guess where he was when the earthquake happened? Now read and listen to Jay's story. Check your answer uh, in exercise 1. 
So the answer is he was at home in his bedroom, sitting on his bed. Unit 3. Cultural Awareness. A Natural Disaster in New Zealand. Exercise 2. Earthquake in Christchurch. A few years ago, a terrible earthquake happened in the city of Christchurch in New Zealand. It killed 185 people, but Jay Watson had a lucky escape. What were you doing when the earthquake happened? I wasn't at school that day because I was sick. I was sitting on my bed when I heard a terrible noise and the whole house started shaking. What did you do? I realised it was an earthquake, so I quickly got down on the floor between my bed and the wall. I thought that was the safest place. At school, we often have earthquake drills, so we know what to do in an emergency. What happened next? Suddenly, the wall of my bedroom collapsed and I fell out of the house. I fell about ten metres from the second floor of the house into the front garden. Were you hurt? At first, I thought I was seriously injured, but I actually only had a few scratches and bruises on my back. I was really lucky. How did you feel? Scared. And not just because of the fall. Lots of bricks fell on top of me while I was lying on the ground. Our next-door neighbour, who was a firefighter, pulled me out from under the bricks. My mum couldn't believe that I was alive. How did your life change because of the earthquake? Well, we had to move to a new house because there was so much damage to our old one. It's in a different area, but I still go to the same school. And it's only got one floor, so I feel a bit safer. Unit 3. Cultural Awareness. A Natural Disaster in New Zealand. Exercise 2. Earthquake in Christchurch. A few years ago, a terrible earthquake happened in the city of Christchurch in New Zealand. It killed 185 people, but Jay Watson had a lucky escape. What were you doing when the earthquake happened? I wasn't at school that day because I was sick. I was sitting on my bed when I heard a terrible noise and the whole house started shaking. What did you do? I realised it was an earthquake, so I quickly got down on the floor between my bed and the wall. I thought that was the safest place. At school, we often have earthquake drills, so we know what to do in an emergency. What happened next? Suddenly, the wall of my bedroom collapsed and I fell out of the house. I fell about ten metres from the second floor of the house into the front garden. Were you hurt? At first, I thought I was seriously injured, but I actually only had a few scratches and bruises on my back. I was really lucky. How did you feel? Scared. And not just because of the fall. Lots of bricks fell on top of me while I was lying on the ground. Our next-door neighbour, who was a firefighter, pulled me out from under the bricks. My mum couldn't believe that I was alive. How did your life change because of the earthquake? Well, we had to move to a new house because there was so much damage to our old one. It's in a different area, but I still go to the same school. And it's only got one floor, so I feel a bit safer. Now, read the interview again and choose the correct words. J tried to escape or protect himself. Answer will be protect himself. J fell out of the window or through a wall. Answer will be through a wall. J was badly or not badly hurt in the earthquake. Answer will be not badly hurt. J was helped by someone he knew or by a team of firefighters. Answer would be someone he knew. The last uh, sentence, J no longer lives in the same area or goes to the same school. Answer would be lives in the same area. 
Thank you for watching this video and then do remember to subscribe to my channel. It is called Educator OmniTube. See you in another lesson for English language. Signing off, I'm Madam Gan. Bye-bye.